Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special episode of CoffeeZilla, where we'll be roasting the worst startups of all time. And we'll be answering the age old question, does everything need to be redesigned from the ground up? Should we ever stop and think not, can we build this, but should we build this? Has Silicon Valley just gone too far? We're gonna answer all those questions in this video, but before we do, this video is actually a partnership with our friends at Mischief. You guys may remember the name, I featured them on an episode of Marketing Mondays. Anyways, long story short, I guess being a sick fan can get you somewhere in life, mom. Because the Mischief team actually called me the other day and told me they wanted me to review one of their drops. I said, I'm in, I'm so excited. And how much am I getting paid? They said nothing. Okay, slightly less excited, but you know what? I freaking love this company, what they do, so I'm in. A day later, they sent me this. They're never before newest drop. Okay, relax, it's just a box, right? Uh, to give some context, if you know how Mischief works, they call themselves an art collective, which is like a fancy way of saying they're a company that's bad at making money, which technically makes me an art collective too. <laughs> And Mischief's whole thing is that they do a new drop every two weeks, never the same drop, and they can be about anything. And this is their 50th drop, which they call Dead Startup Toys. And it looks like from their website um, that it's basically an homage to all the, like, the iconic startups. You can see these terrible products are in heaven now. I already recognize a few, a few of them. And yeah, basically they took the products themselves and made miniaturized versions of them to remember them by. Because let's all be honest, a failure as big as Theranos will never be truly forgotten. And in conjunction with this launch, they wanted someone to roast these startups and they picked me. So let's let's open this guy up. Uh, let's start baby with the Juicero. Maybe we should just uh, check out their marketing real quick and remind people what the Juicero even was. Making juice is easy. Start by taking a stroll down to the neighborhood farmer's market. Buy about $50 worth of organic fruits and vegetables. Don't forget to bring a tote bag. Dig your juicer out from the back of your cupboard. Realize there's still a part missing. Okay, I think I know what they're getting at here. Making juice is annoying. So, okay, you've told us the problem. Now show us what the solution is. What is this? It's a juicero. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what that word means. It's What's a new juicero? Word. Okay, define it for me. Uh, juicero, the best juice ever. What comes out of the juicero is so fresh that it shouldn't even be called juice. It should just be called, I don't know, squashed produce, because that's what it is. You know what we call liquid from squashed produce? It's juice. <laughs> what? Our founder, Doug, is straight up made of juice. Literally, there's juice in my veins. There's juice in my veins. I would have known this thing was a fraud from the start. Anyone who goes, literally, there's juice in my veins, that person cannot be trusted. Promise you that. <laughs> the Juicero team have taken care of everything. Not just the washing, the peeling, and the chopping, but the growing, the harvesting, the washing, the refrigerated transport, the inspecting. Did we mention the washing? The packaging. And finally, delivering to your house. Okay, so actually, here's the thing. You watch this commercial, even now, knowing the... the the ending of Juicero. And you're like, damn, this looks this looks nice. So what's the issue, right? What, what was their problem? Well, basically they over engineered themselves to the max. They have these like smart packets, which are, you, you can see on screen right now with like chopped veggie products in them that you supposedly needed this fancy $400 like machine from the future in order to squeeze. This thing right here, you put your little sustenance package in there and it just uh, squeezed it for you. But the problem is you didn't actually need it. It turns out you could take these little uh, packets yourself and squeeze out just as much juice into a cup as the machine could. Like, look at this, this is the hand squeezed one and this is the, the machine squeezed one. Basically, yeah, you 400 bucks to get a drop more of juice in your cup. And honestly, at this point, I, I mean, I'm looking at this and it's like, oh, this is just pre-juiced juice with an extra step. Like if you're just gonna squeeze juice from a bag into a cup, why not just buy, you know, like this? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so that's Juicero, guys. And here's the little miniature version they sent me. It even uh, opens up to reveal the legendary juice packet, guys, that you definitely should not be squeezing, guys. Wow. Up next, we have the coolest cooler. Let's take a look at the ad that got them $13 million on Kickstarter. That's the sound of a cooler coming down off the shelf. It's the sound of imminent fun. So why haven't cooler designs changed in almost 50 years? Boring coolers are boring, 
break easily, and are a pain to get to and from your destination. Okay, so already I already know what the problem with this device is going to be. It's the biggest problem with Silicon Valley in general. You're always trying to reinvent everything. Like the classic Silicon Valley person, their big idea comes when they're sitting at their desk and they have a pin and they go, the pin hasn't changed in 300 years. I'm going to I'm going to install Wi-Fi in it and change the world. Like no, we don't need that and we also don't need a cooler redesign here, guys. But this young founder doesn't look like he's about to take no for an answer. I wanted a cooler that was really well built, yet had so much fun built into it that I would look for excuses to get outside and enjoy it. So, I created the coolest. The coolest is a complete redesign of what a cooler can be. First, you've got this 18 volt rechargeable blender. You don't realize the number of places you could really go for a blended cocktail or smoothie until you've got a blender built right into the lid. All right, I'm not gonna lie, that's, that's cool. They also said they had a removable Bluetooth speaker. Coolest comes with a removable Bluetooth speaker that connects to any smartphone to wirelessly stream music from up to 30 feet away. They also said it's got a USB charger in it. Okay, this is where it's starting to get really weird. You're trying to design a Swiss Army knife cooler. It's like installing HDMI ports into your tire. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, it's like you can do it. It doesn't mean you should do it, right? And that's this whole product. It's just way over engineered for a basic cooler. It's got LED lighting. It's got tie down bungees. It's got reusable plates. It's got a knife. It's got a removable divider. All told, this thing probably assembles like a Lego set with a thousand different pieces you have to assemble together. And it turns out, well, it was a little harder to manufacture um, than they originally thought. And these Kickstarter backers ended up waiting years before they got their product with a bunch of them never getting it at all. Basically looks like this guy just got $13 million for nothing. Actually, I shouldn't say nothing. They actually got <laughs> investigated by the Oregon Department of Justice. So uh, that's something to put, a little feather to put in your cap there. So yeah, I'd say that is well deserving of uh, the, the award here of one of the top worst startups of all time or Kickstarters in this case. Oh, look at this thing. This little comes with wheels and everything. All right, this is nice. More functional than the actual thing. Anyways, that's it for the coolest cooler, I suppose. Up next, we have Jibo, the assistant that is not Amazon or Google and is probably gonna fail immediately. Cause of death, price, and non-functionality. Let's take a look at their marketing. This is your house. This is your car. This is your toothbrush. These are your things, but these are the things that matter. And somewhere in between is this guy. Introducing Jibo. Right off the top, I hate the listicle where you're telling me what's in my life. This is your house. This is your car. These are the things that matter. Your family. Here's a $900 product that doesn't matter. A robot that nobody asked for to spy on you all the time. <laughs> Yo, dude, if I wanted somebody spying on me in my living room, I'd just ask Alexa. I mean, why do I need this? Please explain it to me. Go. The world's first family robot. Say hi, Jibo. Hi, Jibo. <laughs> when was this made? Oh, it's 2015. Yeah, this is like in the, the tech optimism world, back when we thought robots were going to help us instead of displace us. You remember those days? Um, good times. Now, it seems like they're going to definitely be bringing on the apocalypse. <laughs> Jibo helps everyone out throughout their day. He's the world's best cameraman. By intelligently tracking the action around him, he can independently take video and photos so that you can put down your camera and be a part of the scene. Jibo, take the picture. Bruh, best cameraman? This photo's overexposed to hell. I don't know what you're talking about. He's a hands-free helper. You can talk to him and he'll talk to you back. So you Grandma's carrying him around everywhere he goes. And, and what is he, what is he like spying on what, her recipe here? You don't have to skip a beat. Excuse me, Anne? Yes, Jibo. Melissa, just sent a reminder that she's picking you up in half an hour to go grocery shopping. Excuse me, Anne, I can't let you do that. I can't let you leave this house for your safety. <laughs> uh, the, I guess this is a robot that's going for that, like, almost humanistic natural feel, which I, I don't know about you, I don't like. I don't like this like, robots are your friend thing. 
they're not your friend, okay? <laughs> but anyways, who cares about this marketing? What's the point? Well, it promised to be able to like do all these things and it got there and was basically dead on arrival. I mean, the functionality was extremely limited. It was $900 compared to Amazon Sweatshop, which can crank out Alexa for like a dollar. And just in general, it was just outcompeted in every single conceivable way. And again, even with this image, I'm just like pissed off. Like, what are you setting Jibo down at your dinner table? You're gonna hang out with Jibo all the time? I, I don't get it. I don't like it. A bad idea. <laughs> this is the same kind of thinking that got us here, where we're mass producing Sophie, the strange, uncanny valley robot to solve human loneliness. But anyways, here's our uh, lovely Jibo toy here. Oh, that's kind of cute, right? Look at that. Does this thing work? Like, is it voice activated? Hey, Jibo, order me an Amazon Echo on Amazon.com. About as useful, this toy, as the actual Jibo and considerably cheaper. Uh, up next, we have the Theranos Mini Lab, ladies and gentlemen, long awaited. I knew this would make it. This is a this is an all time great. It was supposed to revolutionize the industry of, you know, taking vials of blood. Instead of taking whole vials, you're supposed to just get a drop and magically this little black box device was gonna tell you everything about your family history and, you know, your vitals. Anyway, let's take a look at their marketing they put together for us. People don't even know that they have a basic human right to be able to get access to information about themselves and their own bodies that can change their lives. I want information about your body. <laughs> Gosh, that voice is so creepy. I want information about your body. It may change your life. What the heck, dude? Every person should have the ability to get that type of test because if you understand that early that you're at risk, there's a lot more that you can do about it. I really hate to do this. It's such low hanging fruit. She's creepy though. Like, so, oh, we make fun of Zuckerberg for seeming like a robot, but this Theranos lady looks like a body snatcher, even despite her running one of the biggest frauds of all time. Cause Theranos, it didn't work. Like spoiler, the thing sucked, it didn't work. And they actually took vials of blood from you they told you that they were only gonna use a drop and they used the vials as backup, but they actually ran the test by just using like regular blood testing. Their whole thing was a fraud. But it has been so overshadowed, not just by me, but in the press, everybody, by Elizabeth Holmes herself, which is quite the feat to overshadow a billion dollar fraud with how weird you are. <laughs> you, know, you know, hey, I ran one of the biggest <laughs> Frauds of all time, but the headline is like chick changes her voice for absolutely no reason and a bunch of other weird stuff about her like personal life Like apparently she just lied to everyone about everything She got a Siberian husky puppy and told everyone that it was a wolf and took it into the boardroom Where the dog just constantly peed on everything <laughs> And she told everyone oh no, it's a wolf. It's and people are like that looks like a husky anyway the point is Pathological liar, weirdo, apparently she bullied people and just created a mythos for herself that is even bigger than the fraud she perpetuated, which, I mean, hats off to you for that. That is a, that is hard to do. So yeah, guys, that's the, that's the short and long of it about Theranos. I feel like you guys have already watched 20 documentaries about this. You don't need to, for me to explain to you what was a fraud about it. Okay, here we go. Here we got the toy. Uh, okay, it's a toy. You you get the gimmick, guys, right? You get you get the thing. It's a it's a little collectible. Now for our next and final startup, we're gonna roast here today. We have the one laptop per child laptop thing. Apparently, they had sixty million dollars in funding and have since um, gone the way of the mini lab. Now this idea, I actually think, much like the Juicero, is not a bad idea on paper. It was billed as an $100 laptop that was gonna save the world. How, uh, you know, by giving hungry children internet. <laughs> How's it gonna do that? Well, because there's no electricity in a lot of these places. Well, these geniuses, they, they thought of everything and they designed a hand crank that these kids who are bubbling with free excess energy can crank to turn on and power their Reddit accounts. What's hilarious about this product is that when they actually unveiled it, it was sort of like a cyber truck moment because these hand cranks broke immediately. He wants you to wind it or something. Oh, no, I, I, I wouldn't wind it. I wouldn't wind He's it. winding it and then, oh, he broke, <laughs> he tore it off. Turns out when you're 
going to build something for $100, the materials have to be pretty cheap. So they kind of scrap that idea and go, okay, no, we're going to redesign it from the ground up. These kids, these kids are going to charge it with the power of their mind, I guess. And so they redesign it into this form factor where the antennas are like Wi-Fi, et cetera. The only problem is, is they originally had built it at costing $100 and everyone got stuck on that price point. Turns out it's kind of hard to build a, anything tech wise for $100. So they failed and the repitch is like, this is the $150 laptop. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go so well. And people quickly outcompeted them with like new netbooks and Chromebooks and all that kind of stuff, which actually had windows on them as opposed to, you know, they had some weird operating system here. So yeah, a very like tech optimist kind of idea. We're gonna give all the kids internet, you know, we're gonna give all the kids laptops that was met with the actual price of goods and um, also was crushed by expectations that they themselves set. And that was actually, I think that's a reoccurring theme in this whole whole thing, right? All these things, they set up expectations that simply couldn't be met and or they over-engineered, over-promised and ultimately under-delivered. But yeah, okay, let's unveil the last one. Oh, it's kind of a, a larger one. That's cool. Oh, dang, that's actually a lot of detail, huh? Look at that, like flips out and everything. Oh, nice. All right, that basically does it. Um, big thanks to Mischief for partnering with this video. And now I'd like to actually review, maybe not the startups themselves, but actually <laughs> the things they sent me, which are these toys. So who are these actually for? Cause they cost money. It's like 40 bucks for a single toy. And the collector's bundle is a hundred and wow, $60. <laughs> so kind of, it's pretty pricey. And I would say that like, these are not for everybody. I think there's a very specific target audience. Number one, for collectors who like limited time edition things, they only make 550 of them ever. And if you also love watching the hubris of mankind burn itself out, um, you'll probably like this. Uh, but the other people, the other target audience, and this, I'm actually gonna tell the mischief. I mean, honestly, I think the real target audience to buying these things is actually venture capitalists straight up. Like, I don't know if that's who mischief is imagining as their target audience. And they told me, they gave me no strings about like what I could say. So I'm just gonna review this honestly. Like, I don't think most people need this, but if I were a founder or I had a company out there and we're like, it, we're trying to innovate, I would buy every single one of these toys, buy them all up and give them to every new founder or member of Y Combinator, you know, cause that's who these neat lessons need to go to. It's not your average person, you know, working in the back at Jimmy John's, like you're the backbone of this economy. You didn't ask for this, right? Like you don't need this in your life. The people who need this are the people who are try trying to install voice assistants into everything, into a pizza box, into a coffee cup, right? They're trying to reinvent the wheel. They're thinking they're Steve Jobs while they burn through billion dollars in capital. They need, these little toys on their shelf to remind them of how far too far is, right? Like for those people, $40 or $160, that's a bargain, right? You're gonna save money with this thing, <laughs> you know? Like, hey, you know, I was gonna try to install geotagging inside of a paper straw, but then I saw Theranos and I was reminded, you know, by this little desk toy that humanity probably doesn't need that, right? <laughs> like. Boom, billion dollars in venture capital saved from the hellfire of dead startups. But that's basically it. That, that's who I would say, collectors and venture capitalists. <laughs> Anyways, if you're one of those two people or you just want one of these things, links are in the description, whatever, you know this thing. I just thought it was a fun idea with these mischief guys and I'm a huge fan of their style, which is why I did it. But yeah, I hope you guys had fun watching this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I know what you mean. This ain't what it seems. Nothing but a trick trying to sell me on a dream. But that was where you lost me. Wake up and smell the coffee.